I'm a feminist, and what that means to me is much the same as the meaning of the fact that I'm black. It means that I must undertake to love myself and to respect myself as though my very life depends upon self-love and self-respect. It means that I must everlastingly seek to cleanse myself of the hatred and contempt that surrounds and permeates my identity. It means that the achievement of self-love and self-respect will require inordinate hourly vigilance and that I'm entering my soul into a struggle that will most certainly transform the experience of all the peoples of the earth. So in effect we are talking, as several people before me have stated, about a revolution if that would come about, if women would start to love themselves. While Jordan is clearly talking from and about her own positioning as a black woman, she's at the same time addressing all women. Her insights pertain to women of all racial, ethnic, class and sexual positionings, women of different nationalities, since one of the main characteristics of patriarchy, which is still very much around globally, is that all women suffer from the real and symbolical ways in which we are depreciated as women. However much we like to tell ourselves upbeat and affirmative narratives about the improvement of the position of women in the past four decades, and there is some truth to those stories, in Europe and globally there are still ominous signs that we as feminists, both male and female, haven't at all succeeded in overcoming deep-seated dominant patterns of thought and feeling which value men over women. The various culturally different expressions of depreciation of women, of being of less, lesser value than men, with its ultimate corollary of women being an object that can be abused and violated, have to a greater or lesser extent been internalized by all of us. I want to briefly say something about my own positioning, where I'm talking from, so as not to do the God trick, God trick as Donna Haraway would say. So I'm uh, trained as an anthropologist, but I work in a faculty of the humanities at uh, uh, Utrecht University, so I, my work has become deeply interdisciplinary. I'm the program leader of the one-year MA in Gender Studies at Utrecht University. Uh, the, the name of the one year MA is Comparative Women's Studies in Culture and Politics. And my work has been on the construction of afro surinamese working class um, women's sexualities. So uh, sexual violence is not really my topic, so I will be speaking from my own observations and impressions and what I see when I look around me. I will foreground the Netherlands and Estonia as the examples from which I draw. Um, and in fact, I will mainly be asking questions about Estonia, since obviously I'm much more familiar with the Dutch situation. In both locations, women still do not make the same wages for the same labor as men. And we do not manage, even in professions where women have become the majority, as in the care and the educational sector in the Netherlands, we do not manage to reach the corridors of true power. In other words, we do not break through the glass ceiling. In the Netherlands, only 40% of women is making a living wage. So that means that fully 60% of women is dependent on a partner for survival. And this doesn't seem like a very smart and sustainable policy for women when um, one knows that two out of three marriages end in divorce. Just want to say something briefly, additionally, about the labor market. 
what we see in the Netherlands is a firm asymmetry in professions that are femininely connotated, like care and education. We see that when men enter into those professions, they go to the top like rockets. They are within the shortest time frame within uh, the management um, functions. On the other hand, when we look at professions that are masculinely connotated, like the police and the fire brigade, when women enter those professions, it, the image that comes to mind is the revolving door. So they are spit out by the organization as soon as they have come in. So you see all kinds of asymmetrical patterns operative in the labor market. Further indications of gender inegalitarianism are that women, for the most part, it is women, for the most part, who become victims of tra trafficking and other sex-related crimes. And they are the ones who have to seek shelter in um, uh, houses, safe houses, from the violence of men. But things need to be immediately complicated here. Um, I do not want to uh, repeat the colorblind dominant gesture that race, ethnicity and class would not matter in these issues. So I'm sort of repeating what Sakia said this morning as we started off. Um, we, um, we, as women, are not all in the same boat. We are not. And so I will be making an intersectional analysis by not only taking gender seriously, but I will also and simultaneously pay attention to race, ethnicity, and class. Oftentimes in the Netherlands, it is uh, Eastern European women, but even more so women of color, that is women from Africa, who fall victim to the most atrocious forms of sexual violence. Thus, I will briefly talk about a particular case, the Krachenburg case, which occurred in 2005, in which five female African refugees were kidnapped, kidnapped in Belgium and brought to Krachenburg. This is a small village in a God-forsaken province, the North Oost Polder, which is land reclaimed from sea, so you can imagine the bleak landscape that we're looking at. These women were kidnapped in Belgium, taken to a barn in this village of Krachenburg, where they were forced to have sex with dogs and with horses, and this was filmed for the porn industry. It is noteworthy that the case has received relatively little attention in the media. According to the perpetrators, a group of white Dutch men and women from Almere, of all places, they had consciously targeted African refugees because they were sure that they would not dare to go to the police. Generally, I believe we can say that it is women who are racially, ethnically, and or nationally, and or linguistically different from the majority population, who can be marked as other, who become an abject and at the same time highly, highly desirable object for men of the dominant group. I'm not entirely sure how this would work out in Estonia, but I proffer it to you to contemplate whether in Estonia as well, it is especially women from the minorities, and maybe the Russian-speaking minority, who are targeted as objects of abuse, trafficking, and unfair treatment. <clears throat>